Hi everyone, so today we are going to be rebuilding some brake calipers. So this time around, rather than our usual antics of either spraying cars or breaking stuff or doing burnouts, I'm going to show you how to rebuild some calipers. It's something that I've been putting off for a little while. I've now got to the point where I've had to do it. I don't like doing it, but I've actually found out some really cool techniques that I'm gonna show you guys. Should make your lives a little bit easier. Everybody you normally speak to when you talk about rebuilding brake calipers, uh, they normally turn their nose up and grimace. It isn't that bad and hopefully, you guys will be able to rebuild your calipers too. So I've got a rear brake caliper. These are SVT calipers. So uh, this goes with the 276 mil rear disc on the uh, MX-5, so like the 2001 to 2005 cars. I run this on my 1989 and uh, they're pretty good. They're like a bigger piston, uh, bigger disc. So I had quite a bit of corrosion on the inside of my pistons on my front brake calipers. So I bought a whole kit that included pistons, it included new seals. It had absolutely everything that I needed to make that happen. So this time round, I will be doing just a rear caliper. The process is very much the same for doing a front caliper, uh, which mainly consists of doing your uh, dust boot at the front and a square cut seal, which seals the piston to the bore of the caliper. So very much the same. The hardest part of doing a front brake caliper job is actually just getting the piston out of the bore of the caliper so there are a number of ways to do that we like to use compressed air it really helps to push it out however uh, if you're in a if you don't have access to that um, pulling your brake pads out and pulling the caliper off the disc and pumping the pedal until the pistons push themselves out is one way of doing it uh, if you've got somebody there to help you and watch make sure it doesn't blow it completely out would be really helpful might make a mess but that would be a much easier way than pulling it off and then struggling to pull the piston out. Because I am reusing pistons, I actually also got my uh, front caliper and I held the piston in the vise and then knocked it with a rubber mallet until and uh, worked it backwards and forwards until the whole caliper came off of the piston. So that's another way of doing it. So because I am replacing my pistons, I've got a brand new piston. The ones in mine were corroded, so I've chosen to replace those. Now with a front caliper, you will have just the dust boot and the square cut seal. Because I'm demonstrating rebuilding a rear caliper, we've also got the uh, slider pin cap, we have the handbrake mechanism uh, seal, we have the bleed nipple seal, and in, I have uh, a spare O-ring, but I have two O-rings uh, for the handbrake adjustment mechanism. I've already replaced the dust boots on this caliper, as you can see, so I've already been through and done that earlier. Um, that's very easy, they just slide on, so there's, there's nothing too hard there. In terms of tools, I've got a 14 mil spanner to get the uh, uh, bolt off the back of the caliper for a handbrake adjustment. I've got two picks over here, which are going to allow me to get a circlip out, which is inside the caliper. I have a set of uh, far too large pliers to help me remove the handbrake mechanism. And over here, I've got a electric ratchet with a uh, four mil uh, mm -hmm. Allen head, which will help me wind out the handbrake mechanism. I've also got some brake fluid to help me whilst assembling the whole thing. Yeah, so let's now get to breaking down this caliper. I'm cheating, I'm using an electric ratchet. It's my favorite tool. And just gonna pop that in the back of the caliper and wind the piston completely out. There you go. So now that that has stopped moving, it's reached the end of its adjustment, which means I should now be able to pull the piston out. So I take a bit, a little bit of persuasion to get out. I'm not concerned about damaging this piston because I've got brand new ones. So here's the handbrake mechanism. In order to get that out, we need to pull the adjuster out. And what that will allow us to do is to pull up that handbrake mechanism. So that's our next job. So, but whilst I'm here, I'm just going to remove the dust boots that are already in the piston. So they just peel out without too much trouble. And then I'm very carefully going to pry out the seal on the inside. Yeah, so there's the old seal. And now, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see. So at the bottom here, we have a circlip which we need to remove. Two picks will allow us to get that job done. 
there aren't a set of circuit pliers in the world that you'll be able to use to remove that. It's quite far down in there. It seems like it could be a difficult task, but it actually doesn't take that long. Oh, it is not particularly easy, um, but it is definitely possible. There we go. Ah, he says. There we go, got it. So now that I've worked up a sweat getting that out, there is our circlip. That must have taken perhaps five minutes, maybe not even that. Using the two picks on both of the holes, I was squeezing the circlip together enough until a point with a bit of lifting action, it was able to just pop straight out. So that is, that is probably the hardest part of the entire rebuild process. So now that we've got that out, we should be able to remove the mechanism. There we go. So removing the hot dog from the adjuster screw, I'm gonna pop it straight into the bottom of the handbrake mechanism. And then I'm gonna thread that in. So there we go, that's just released the handbrake mechanism. Easy as that. So now, so now I'm gonna take my new piston and we will press the new handbrake mechanism in. I'm gonna use a vise for this. That's nice and level. And you should hear a click when it's fully seated. There we go. So that's the handbrake mechanism reinstalled. So I'm now gonna remove the old O-ring, being careful not to damage the adjuster and replace it with a new one. There we go. So now that I've got a new set of gloves on, when you're adjusting the handbrake mechanism on your rear calipers, so they engage like that, which is why very often if you, if you use a bit too much brute force, you'll often strip all these threads. So now with the adjuster out of the caliper, I'm going to remove the handbrake mechanism so that we can replace the seal inside using my far too big pliers. So that, that mechanism won't come out unless it's all the way past there. It was uh, catching. So there's the mechanism out. And there is the seal. So we can just see the seal here. That's the seal out. So whilst everything's in pieces, I'm just going to take the opportunity to clean everything out. I've got some uh, brake cleaner on my rag. So I'm just cleaning this out so we can get the seal in there, get it seated really nice. It can be a bit of a job, uh, so we wanna make that as easy for ourselves as possible. So I'm just using some supplied red rubber grease. And replacing that seal. I'm going to lubricate the shaft of the handbrake mechanism. There we go. Uh, 
And now we can replace our spring. There we go. So we take our adjuster again. And I'd put my hot dog in a safe place this time. Uh, I lost it yesterday and that was uh, too much hilarity of everybody else in the office. Uh, but we've now got the hot dog nice and safe. So I'm gonna just pop that back inside the adjuster. So it goes back in hot dog first. Now with the adjuster seated back in the bottom of the caliper, we're going to pop our circlip back in. Squeeze the ends of the circlip back together and then it should snap back into place. There we go, I think that's in. I'm just going to clean the inside of where the square seal sits. I don't really want any gunk in there. I don't want it to be any harder to get that in than it already is. Now I'm gonna show you how to get the square cut seal in, the dust boot and your piston. This is the part that is the same as doing your front calipers, so everything that I'm going to show you now applies exactly the same to doing the front. So now we're going to take the square cut seal and put it in its home. So it just slides in there without too much trouble. It might look like it wants to sit a little bit proud, but if you work it backwards and forwards with your fingers, you should be able to just get it to sit in there nicely. At this stage, I am going to pre-lubricate it with a little bit of brake fluid. I'm just going to rub some brake fluid around in there, just make sure it's nice and happy when we put everything back together. So now we're going to do the pistons and the dust boot. This is the part that is definitely the most painful. If you've never done it before, uh, I've tried all sorts of things. We've tried putting the dust boot in and then putting the piston in and using a pick to pull the boot around it. Extremely hard. We've tried putting the dust boot in and using our fingers to pull it apart, also extremely hard. I found this great technique that you guys can use, which should help you get your boots in super quick and easy. So this part of the dust boot is going to sit inside this piston. At the minute, I don't want it to sit on there, so I'm gonna just put it on and push it past it from the top of the piston down. There you go, so I'm gonna push it past that ring I'm going to be extremely careful and just push it just past the top part of the lip of the piston. So now this is the bottom part of the dust boot, which is going to sit in this ring just here that we've already just cleaned out. With the piston over the bottom of the dust boot, we're going to insert this rim into the bit where it needs to live. So I'm going to use, I'm going to place the back part into the back part of the caliper first, and then very carefully, I'm going to work the dust boot the rest of the way around. It will take a couple of goes to get it in, but then once it is in, you should be able to pull on the piston. And if, it, if you pull it out, it's not seated properly. So you want to get it in there as good as you can. Work it all the way around. You're better off pulling it out a couple of times than it to not be seated properly. So now I'm I'm using quite a bit of force pulling that piston up. It's not pulling out. So if I were able to pull that out and it pulled the dust boot out, I would know that it wasn't seated properly. So now what I'm gonna do whilst that is still in there, I'm just very quickly going to lubricate the seal that is inside here. So the square cut seal is in there. I wanna make sure that square cut seal is foot, has got lots of brake fluid on it for the piston to be able to slide backwards and forwards. There you go. Oh, see, it's not seated. That's because that's come out of there. But now it is. By filling that seal full of fluid, you will also see if anything comes out. So I'd had a little bit come out here, so I was able just to push that seal back in, make sure it's all nice and firmly seated. I'm just gonna drain that fluid back out.
So now just with a little bit of pressure, it should slide past the seal. There we go. So now that the piston is back in and touching the adjuster, I'm going to pop the uh, adjustment mechanism back in. So now I'm just gonna put some light pressure against the piston whilst I wind in the adjuster. We have now got a set of rebuilt calipers. So I'm just gonna wind that back out once more just so that I'm happy that it's seated. Yep, I'm happy that that's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna pop the, pop the cover back on. I've got the pin The little boot for it. I've already re already replaced the bleed nipple and that also comes with a little cap. And there is one fully rebuilt caliper. I'm probably gonna get chirped in the comments for not having painted it. It's my track car. So thanks very much for watching this video. I hope that you got something out of it. Please give it a like if you've enjoyed it, if you've learned something, or if you've used it to rebuild the calipers on your Mazda MX-5. Let us know down in the comments what color I should be painting my calipers. Also subscribe to us for more Mazda MX-5 and Miata content every single Friday. Visit our website, boffyracing.co.uk, give us a call, and we will catch you next time. So now I'm gonna show you how to get the square cut seal in, the dust poot, dust poot? Dust poot. Now I'm gonna show you how to get the square cut seal in, the dust poot, and no, another one. I can do another one. <laughs> One more, last one. one more. One of them will be good. Something, there's there's like ten. Something in there. There's like ten.